Hello, Judge. Morning. Had to Hello. shovel snow last night till 2 a.m. in the morning, and then I got up today and had another four inches. I got a 2,000 square foot driveway, and I hand shoveled it because my snowball worm won't start. The spark plug's messed up. Hello. So I got my workout last night and today. <laughs> 68 years old and I just survived five heart attacks and I shouldn't be out shoveling snow, but what the hell. <laughs> I need the exercise. I will let you know, I came here uh, wanting only two and a half hours of Miller's time. He said, no, forget about that, just come come every day, we'll meet you every day, we'll spend the whole day together and the whole another day and another day and another day. And we start early and we finish really late. And he's been answering virtually all of our questions. And some of them I've captured on video. I think it's about nine hours of footages that I've captured. But we've been speaking for well over probably 30 hours, I think. Yes. Hi, David. It's Justin from uh, England. Hi, Justin. We've talked. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi, Justin. Uh, David, I'd just like to ask you about Parse. Okay. Parse is... Um, but to learn about Parse, pick up any hymn book in any religion. All hymn books are written in Parse. Parse is mathematics. It's how you break a word up by syllables. And P-R-A means uh, comes from parts, and S-A is speak, parts of speech. So each word that you create, uh, anybody that creates music, I mean, all music is mathematics, has to break up the rhythmic uh, uh, symbols of a word to match the music. And that's how you learn Parse. Could you tell me what occupier means? Occupy, O-C-C. -C. All right, under maritime, uh, under the laws of alien, man, the human being, the word human means monster, has been at war for 10,000 years that they have recorded. Because all land masses on planet Earth have been subject to war. That means that you, when a war takes place and you, you take the land by war or you take the land without buying it by killing somebody, that the word is alien, A-I-L-I-N-G. So when you use the word ocup occupation or oc occupy, the OCC means that you have no contract to own that, that property because it was an alien condition of titling. So there is no Lodio, L-O-D-I-A-L, location, D-I is original, A-L is contract. No original contract. However, in the movie Tom Hanks and Castaway, Tom Hanks was a single man on a desert island by himself, so he was sovereign, and he had Lodio title to the island. Uh, Mark Walden in the movie uh, Martian was the only human being on Mars. There was no war. So he, he cultivated it and explained it under maritime law and international law that, that he, was, <clears throat> he was a sovereign on, Mark, on, on Mars. He was not occupying it. He was actually farming it. He lived there. And under international maritime law, uh, the word international, by the way, I-N is no T-E-R is terra for earth, Nation is people and AL is contract, no earth people contract. He wasn't on earth. He was on a different planet. So he colonized it by himself by growing crops and living there for three years. Under the under international law, the, the, the planet earth then joined together to bring him home so planet earth could make contract with him to go back to Mars in a future date because he now owned it to do to mining. And they explained that quite in detail throughout the whole movie. And, and all of that goes to all of my programs. That you have to have a correct contract, it has to be written in correct grammar, using the correct words in the correct prepositional phrase sequence to make a correct contract. Then you have a correct contract. Then you have a correct contract. Then you can establish quiet title. Now in Hawaii, it took me six months and 186 pages of research and development to capture a plot of land where I was living and file the first lodial correct parse syntax grammar performance contract for that land. 
and that lodial title of, of uh, what's called a quiet title, which means there's no challenge from any living or past individual from any contract anywhere on the planet. And that stands in Honolulu uh, for the property in Maui. When I left Maui, the house was seized 10 days after I left Maui to come back to Wisconsin on the 15th of December, 2015. No one can sell it or occupy the property after I left. It still sits there empty. So, Is it okay if I paraphrase some of these stuff that you're sure. saying? So you guys are familiar with the film uh, with Matt Damon in it, and I've Marshall. always, yeah, with my, with my Matt Damon, I think is the actor, uh, the Martian. He goes there; it's unoccupied. He hasn't killed anybody because it's inhabited. And in order for him to live there, he cultivated the land. When he cultivated the land, because there was no war on it, no ailing, he could get himself to say that he is now that place is his, claim loyal title and thereby also sending out a message to NASA and in that film he does say this is all under maritime law uh, he sends a message out NASA now comes and picks him up which is now a salvage operation so they salvage him and the land that he cultivated and because the land itself which is Mars in the film is not in dispute under maritime law they captured it. Have I paraphrased? That was perfect and under title 46 chapter 780 uh, 781, that's salvage claim. So he filed a salvage claim for the planet and then cultivated it. And there was nobody there to file a grievance against him. And he had one year and three days under the Rescissions Act for anybody to file a grievance on Mars, and he was the only person. So henceforth, there was no, once he had his salvage claim established, he, he, owned, the, he owned Mars. Simple as that. So just to uh, find some more supporting evidence, if you remember when the Crown went to Ireland uh, in the 12th century or whatever it was. They said this is a barren wasteland and there are no natives here. And they treated the Irish people the same. They did the same thing with the Australians. Um, and they did Zulu, South this, Africa. And the, uh, and the list would, of course, go on and on. And far as I remember, when the crown landed in England, they said the same thing as well and killed off all the native English people. <laughs> See, when... When uh, England landed in 1800 in South Africa, the first thing they did, the mailman, or the postmaster, got off the boat and rowed to the shoreline by himself. He then went ahead and he put up a tent. And he put up the British flag in front of the tent. And, of course, the Zulu tribesmen had never seen a white man before because they were the first ones down there. And he put up and he said, this is a post office for mailing letters and communicating. And they said, well, this isn't your land, get off. And because the post office controls all military on planet Earth, the, the mailman then said, sent a message back to the, to the ship, soldiers come here and protect me from the Zulu. So the, the Zulu then had a few skirmishes with the, with the military from the ship under the guise, G-O-I-S-E, of the of the postmaster who was postmaster general ordering his troops to protect him so they went ahead and they then took this post office which was a tent and they built a structure and <clears throat> the tent had to be there for one year or the, rather the structure had to be there for one year of fighting so finally the, the British government says to the Zulu chief listen why don't we take this to court and fight this in court instead of killing each other. And the Zulu chief says, well, this is good karma to, to negotiate a settlement. And the Zulu chief was a 34 degree master mason. Are we talking about Zaka Zulu himself? Yeah, he was a 34 degree master mason. Zaka Zulu. I'm a 92nd degree master mason. That's because I hold the secrets and the key master and a bunch of other stuff. But So... The captain of the ship was a 34 degree mason and the postmaster general was a 34 degree master mason. Masons are not allowed to kill each other. So they had to sit down after one year and three days under maritime law of salvage. They then hung the sign that this is a court, a district court over the post office building. All post office buildings 
put up across the United States for its history were post offices to establish a, a point of moving vessels, which are human beings and mail, between point A and point B, uh, effective through the New World Order, October, uh, well, that was, well, that New World Order was October 22nd, 20, 20, uh, 1871, but we're going back to 1800 now. So the British Crown was, was using maritime law in the post office to, to establish to establish the uh, the court. And so when the Zulu came in, the judge says to the Zulu chief, show us your written contract that says this land belongs to you. He says, well, we have rights. We have lived here for thousands of years on this land. And we've, we've conquered it. Well, if you conquer land, that's ailing, A-I-L-I-N-G, because you killed the people that were there. And the Zulu were warriors, so there was a lot of skirmishes taking place in, in the Africa between tribes. So because the land was under ailing, and they didn't have a contract to purchase the, doc, to purchase the land, it comes back to the Zulu have a right, the postmaster has a right, the military has a right, and the judge says, well, we all have rights. The fox has a right to eat, and the chicken has a right to eat. Enough said about rights. What that says is that the, the person that is the strongest and the most powerful will have the right of conquest over the weaker party. But you know what that is? It's the definition of rape, R-A-P-E. To rape somebody, rape a forest, rape a city, rape a people, sexual rape, to use power to dominate another person and damage them. So, thank you very much. Can I recap? Sure. Okay. Um, so, just one more point with the loyal title. So, when Miller filed his own loyal title in Hawaii, the land itself was never under dispute, and there was no oh. war. Oh, wait. There was. No. <clears throat> the Hawaiian people came to the Hawaiian Islands from from the uh, Polynesia in 800 A.D., and there were people living on the Hawaiian Islands. Now, the Hawaiians built these 250 to 300 foot long canoes, which they rowed 1,780 miles to the Hawaiian Islands. For like four years, they saw this bright glow in the sky, which is Mauna Loa, when it was erupting. And so they were curious about what the glow was, so they got built this big canoe, put 250 guys on it. And the Hawaiians in the year 800 AD stood seven foot six and weighed 500 pounds. The big boys from the Polynesia. So they paddled their way all the way up there. When they got up there, there was little people there. They didn't want the blood contaminated. So they had 20-foot bamboo poles, and they walked the island from one island, completely across the island, and they killed all the inhabitants on the Hawaiian Islands so that the blood would never be tainted. And then for 1,200 years, they had as the tribe got bigger and bigger and bigger, up to two million people, they had domestic wars between their own tribes. So the Hawaiian Islands, even though they didn't have external battles, because I believe the Chinese and the Japanese sailors came there and were probably there for a thousand years by accident. Or, or their ships crashed there and they wound up staying on the island and, and developing it until the Hawaiians showed up and they were bigger guys and more powerful people and so they they dominated took over the island and the blood stayed stayed straight up into to, to the year 1800 when cook shows up first in 1789 and comes back in 1800 to bring uh, courts and religion and change everything but when the white man came he also brought disease and the population from 1800 to 1829 went from 2 million people to 29,700. 99% genocide of the Hawaiian race. And then he had all the whalers coming in from every country in the world. And they brought, brought all their 
uh, diseases. And that was just a hotbed of people getting syphilis and gonorrhea and clap and, and tuberculosis and smallpox and everything else until everybody got so sick they, it boiled down to where it is and it, it, then the Hawaiian Islands were developed uh, to where they are today. So, thank you. Hawaii was, now Bailey, Bailey was brought to the Hawaiian Islands in 18, <clears throat> 1834 to lay out land plots. And because Bailey was a, a surveyor, he put his name on all the Chai Choice areas. And when he died, when they looked at the land plots of who, what family owns what, Bailey's name is on all these. Uh, 60 square miles of prime sugar cane. Then they brought in the, the, the Chinese and the Japanese and the Filipinos to build aqueducts to bring water from like Kona, Kona not Kona, uh, Hana, where they got 500 inches of rain a year, uh, to, the, to the valley between Haleakala and, and North Island and put in his big sugar canes. That's, that's the Maui story. You go up into uh, Oahu, you've got uh, uh, pineapple and sugar cane up there. Dole, Dole Pineapple owns everything. But Bailey, he basically wrote his name on everything. And when I found out he did everything in adverb for fiction, I'm going, there's no titles in Hawaii. This whole thing is open. That's why I went and I filed quote, Lodial Title for the land with the correct parse syntax grammar. And the government couldn't dis couldn't argue with it. They couldn't tear it down. They couldn't remove it from the files. And after I got elected king of Hawaii, I made all kinds of changes with the, the constitution and correct grammar. And uh, the government's been on the run ever since. And that is why there is only two banks. As, There's only uh, two banks in Hawaii because of quantum language. Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Bank. There's the Pacific Rim Savings and Loans. But there's no offshore banking from any country on planet Earth because all banking on planet Earth is controlled through Bern, Switzerland, the post office, and fiction banking. But in Hawaii, it's quantum. So that's why the fact in the fiction shall never meet. And me and Martin did some uh, searches on that. And um, you, <coughs> there are no foreign banks. We, we checked no. that. There are no foreign banks. There are native banks. Hawaii is not the 50th state of America. Hawaii is a sovereign country as of March 8th, 2013, when it came out of its second international bankruptcy. You can go up on my website in the entire history of Hawaii, going starting at 1789, and how the Masons joined together from many different countries that were on the island, and we're going to capture the islands. And uh, the timelines, it's all about timelines. And the, the, the proclamations, declarations that were made, PRO means no contract. And DE means no contract. So all the laws that were written as far as contracts by the kings and everybody else, and even the masons, were all fraud. So when I showed up and I looked at, went into the archives and I pulled up all the historical books, and all the historical treatings, I disqualified everything as the king and wrote a correct, we got 72 families of the Hawaiians together and wrote a quantum contract, a, a, a constitution 115 pages long for the United Nations and during the blood diamond wars that were taking place and everyone remembers that at the Hague they were doing the blood diamond thing, went on for 13 years, they stopped the trial because they had never seen quantum language written and they had to learn about quantum language because the Hawaiians were the first country on planet Earth to introduce a quantum constitution for their independence from the United States. Now, in 18, 1893 when the United States took Hawaii as a territory, they couldn't do that because Hawaii was in bankruptcy and from uh, 1871 until World War I, uh, World War II started, 1941. That's exactly 70-year international bankruptcy. The United States of America was in bankruptcy from 1776, uh, 1789 to 1859, and 1859 to 1929, a 
bankrupt corporation cannot invade another bankrupt corporation from Bern, Switzerland under international postal law. So Hawaii was never invaded. They were always sovereign. And because people only have a second grade reading level, nobody knew how to stop it. The only person that knew what was going on was the Postmaster General and the Supreme Court Justice. At, no matter where, all the Supreme Court Justices were aware of syntax. Because that goes back to 1215 in England at the Magna Carta. And I disqualified that, and that was sold to Christie's of London for uh, $6.8 million as a historical document with no value. And I did a, a little presentation on that where the, where the building itself was for sale on right move, and when I released the information, um, the years later, of course, uh, they took it down, they took the website down, uh, and it wasn't for sale. But they still left out the, they still lift, left up there the information that the, the document itself was sold to an American billionaire mm -hmm. as a, a piece of antique. Yeah, um, so that's that. The, the question I wanted to ask you, I didn't know um, the, another race of Polynesians came aboard the Hawaiian Islands and they killed them. Where would I find that information? That's in their artwork. The history of Hawaii is, is written on the volcanic tubes. You have to go and dive off of Kona uh, on Big Island. And you got to go out maybe a quarter mile, go down about 60 feet, and they have uh, volcano tubes, nice big round ones. And you got to swim up in the tubes and they go up into the volcano. And that's where the history of Hawaii is kept, going all the way back 1,200 years. Because the Hawaiians, when they got to the island, of course, they, they were fishermen. They had, to, they had to eat. And when they're diving down there, they discovered the volcano tubes. And so they swam up in there and uh, said, this is a great place. It's preserved to, to write down our history. And so with paint, with painting, they painted their history on the walls of the, well, of the volcano tubes in pictures, pic pictographs. So the, the cave drawings and the paintings were an actual library, like the Egyptians would etch it into the stone. Right, the Egyptians at the same time. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Sorry, let me cover one more thing. Um, under international law, as far as I know, when you call yourself a warrior like an eco-warrior, you're already declared war on people, and therefore you are open, you are open to attack. But if you call yourself a friend of the earth or something, that signifies that you're friendly and that you're a friend. So I remember during the 80s when the movement started off that the, the, actual, the, the actual founders of the animal rights, liberation and so on and so forth, what they did is they made it very clear that the, it's the animals that are the, the, the fans, it's not about the humans. And then of course the infiltration came along and then they sexed it up and the, uh, the, the younger folks, as it were, wanted to make it look more sexy and they called themselves eco-warriors. As soon as that happened, the French sank, uh, and they put that out, out on television, they sank Rainbow Warrior. How can a ship that's on peaceful duties be calling itself a warrior? So if he calls himself a warrior, I have the right to attack him because he's declaring to me that he is at war with me and mm -hmm. the rest of the world. When you want to file a claim, you, you've got to go over, over to the Bureau of Conveyance in Honolulu. And in uh, the big building with that big roof that goes out, it's on the second floor. They know me there real well. I've been in and out of that building about 50 times. Every time I show up, i got marshals coming in out of the woodwork to surround me. <clears throat> Next question, folks. Well, the the people that took me when I was eight years old in their craft, uh, they held me for, they asked me to come aboard. It was voluntary. They asked my brother. He said no when I went out. They put a, a machine on my head, and uh, it programmed my brain for the things I would need in life. And this whole program... Uh, correct Parsi syntax grammar, my travels around the world, the people I meet, uh, weather events, earthquake events, nuclear weapon events, magma events, 9-11, 
All these kind of things. The fact that I went to college full time for 17 years and studied engineering, metallurgy, chemistry, science, uh, medicine, law, <clears throat> the, the arts. And all these things became relevant, but it was all in the world of fiction. And then when I broke the math interface on grammar, I had to go back and redo, to, redo everything in, uh, in quantum. And then build the program I've got for my, my website. Uh, all of it, every time I do a seminar, I videotape it to make a permanent record and then post it on the internet so the world can see what's going on. Someday I'm going to die. I've done that eight times already. I'm still here. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's about, it's about, it's just like Nikola Tesla. He had a lot of super, he was the superman of our, of our time. With, with, with technology and he published it and he advertised it and we have our AC electricity and our internet and our TV and our radio and our, our Rife machines and our, our zappers and diacoms uh, all from that kind of science. So it's, it's uh, if you make a record and you publish it, if they kill you, it's still there. But if you keep it secret, uh, they kill you and the secrets are lost forever. The greatest crime any of you can ever commit in life is to be smart and not teach. Pass on to the young people the things that you learned and the lessons that you've learned that you have been successful at. Always teach your successes to the younger, younger people. And you got to do it through videos and written contracts. That's why, why Facebook is big, and, and YouTube is big. In my whole program, I, I get 10, 10 organizations a day call me up and say, you got the driest website on the Internet. It's got absolutely no fluff or color or advertising. <laughs> it's 400 pages long, and it gives me a migraine headache. Let me redo it for you in fiction so it's easier to read. And I'm going, you know what? I got five billion people on my website. It's the world's largest website with the highest daily traffic of any website out there. Why would I change that? People are tired of being BSed. They want correctness. And so I built a correctness website. It's going to stay up the way it is. And there's no competition, no plagiarizing in four billion websites out there. People may copy my stuff and put it up on another website to enhance it or to increase advertising but there's no there's no competition where anybody says I did this first now the whole world's already given me credit I was the first guy to develop the the math interface on grammar other people have said that they had done uh, a grammar interface and when I looked at it like the Bible codes for instance it's it's doing fiction for fiction and when I syntax it it's 100 percent wrong so, my technology is just like a math problem. Nobody ever went to war over a math problem in the history of mankind because you can do every math problem backwards. And every sentence I write, you can write it backwards. So it means the same thing. You can move all the words around and it still says the same thing. You can't screw it up. The Lord's Prayer that I rewrote on my website, you can take all the synonyms of every word in the Lord's Prayer and interface it one at a time and write 10,000 Lord's Prayers, frontwards and backwards, because it's written both frontwards and backwards. And it always says the same thing. You can't screw it up. And when Pope Paul saw that, he said it was the first time he ever understood the Lord's Prayer. To become a Pope, living in a world of adverb, verb, <clears throat> and then seeing quantum language. So he ordered a seminar set up in Austin, Texas, to teach the cardinals, the bishops, and the nuns how to syntax the Bible and rewrite the Bible and correct grammar. It's a pretty big job. That's the Lord's Prayer out of his book. Uh, first thing that we did is we photocopied it, read it, and we understood it. That was me and Will. Uh, so that's that.